Part two of setting up Pystar. Let me know what you thought about the last one. Put your comments below about what you think about this one. And I hope you enjoy. Shut up and sit down. Ape says, I had a card go corrupt. I've had cards go corrupt for no reason at all. In fact, for no apparent reason at all. In fact, this one right here, you can't really see it. I suggest, as much as you can, don't use those black, those solid black micro SD cards that you can get on, um, on Amazon. Those things have more trouble than these. If you can see this right now, this was one of those gray um, or, Samsung? or green. This one's, I think this one's a Samsung card, but those green ones that are, um, I forget the name of them. But those, uh, but the but the ones that are solid black tend to not work as well as the ones that the either the green or the red ones that you can get on Amazon, which are a little bit more expensive, but they just kind of they just kind of work better in my opinion. So um, use what you got, but just uh, FYI, that's that's been my experience. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chester says it's best to use name brands such as Sandisk. That I, I would agree with that. Um, you don't need anything as big as 16 or 32 gigs to run in the Pi Star. I think this one's an eight gig. Um, of course you can use a bigger one if you want to, especially if you're going to try the dual boot thing we were talking about a minute ago. But, um, but I just, just suggest, I just suggest getting something. Don't buy a brand on Amazon that you've never heard of, you know, use something that's, that's recognizable. That would be, uh, that would be my advice there. So once we get in here, let me go back to the screen. Once we get in here, once you get booted up and you get it connected to your internet, uh, your, and and of course with these with these um, with these these uh, devices that actually have a Pi three, three three plus and four boards, even the Pi two board, uh, you have an Ethernet cable. If you want to save yourself some headache about searching for APs and entering passwords, plug it e plug an Ethernet cable from the Pi Star device into your home router. And then log into your home router and find out what IP it is and just go to that IP and set it up from there. You can do that as well. There's multiple ways to do it. Do, do it however you are most comfortable would be my, my advice. So once you get in here, you're going to see that uh, the WLAN 0, which is the wireless LAN, is up. This is, um, it says interface up right there. And then it says um, IP address, it, that's my IP address right there. Um, so I can, I can browse to the, yeah, I see it right there. I can browse to the, uh, Pi Star dashboard by entering the IP address in a browser. I have found that this host name right here, which this one is TGIF Pi Star. I have found that that works sometimes. Um, it generally speaking, I just go find the IP and use that. Cause like, like right there, I just tried to use it and it pulled up Google. I can try dot .local. I think you need a dot, dot .local. It still doesn't work. It really depends on the router you're using at home I, or the router that you're using. If you're in a hotel room, I've, I've never gotten it to work in a hotel room. I, I will agree with you. I could not get the host name dot .local to yeah. work. It always brought me and tried to Googling it. Right. Maybe it's Chrome. But, could um, be Chrome. I've, I've always needed to go to the um, I always IP just address. use the IP address just because it's just so much simpler. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're using one of these with a the screen. The screen will tell you what the IP address is. Okay, there's a screen on the new R Finder HCP1. There's a screen on both of these TGIF spots. There's a screen on one or two of the Zoom spots. Um, there's several other brands. If you if you build your own and get a Nexion screen for it, there you go. So if your screen is configured properly, it will tell you the IP address on the front of the pot of the of the device. So you don't even have to guess about it. You don't have to log in your router and figure it out. It'll just it'll just come up and it'll just type that IP address your the internal 192.168 internal IP address into a browser, and it will come up and be just fine. Uh, I I find that's much easier than trying to jack around with the um the host name of it. I I I rarely get that to work. Philip in the chat says Edge does the same thing. Um, does a search for it, so um. The I, dot local doesn't seem to be working yeah. as well. Yeah, I um, 
I don't use Edge because I hated Internet Explorer with a passion so much that I know that Edge is not Internet Explorer and it's supposed to be much improved and all that. And I just, you know, two decades of Internet Explorer sucking completely has just I don't think really he's advocating for it. He was just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, well, yeah, okay, 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 I'll give you that. <laughs> I, I, I'll give you I, that. I, I'm, I'm going to say he's not advocating for yeah. Edge. Yeah, He's He's already tried the other browser thing. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm hoping. I, I just by the time you do all that, you could just look up and <laughs> look up your IP. People are talking about IP scanners in there. You can get one of those too. Those are there's apps on your phone. You can get an IP scanner yeah, that scans all the IPs on your app. Go go to log into your router. Yeah, it'll be fairly obvious what the new device yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're at my house and there's like twenty yeah. devices on on my network. Yeah. So okay, let's go back over here. All right. So when we come up to the dashboard, the dashboard's the first thing you're going to see. And it's not prompting me for a username and password when I click on configuration because I've already logged into it and it's saving that info. But when you click on configuration, generally you'll get a pop-up window right here that asks for a username and password. The username is always going to be pi-star and the password is raspberry, all lowercase. Yes. Now, now you can go in there and change that and I suggest that you do, especially if you're going to set it up and run it full-time at your home. But that's the general configuration is pi-star pi is the username and raspberry is the password. And once you get in there, you um, you see this Pi Star digital voice configuration dashboard. It comes up here. You've got the option up here for D Star repeater or MMDVM host. I have never used D Star repeater in Pi Star. Um, way back when, before DMR and Fusion were around. D-Star was the only digital voice mode in amateur radio for a while, and it was much more watered down back then. Um, then it, well, I mean, it just wasn't as updated. What, what Pi-Star wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't as robust as it is now. But they have done a very good job keeping up with the times, making updates, applying updates. You can see right here, my dashboard is 2019, 1016, so my dashboard is about a year old. That's because I haven't used this, this hotspot lately. So if I wanted to update my version of Pi-Star, this is where your your dashboard version right here at the top right corner that tells tells you what version of the dashboard you're running and what version of pi star you're running is right next to it 3.4.17 so if i wanted to update i could click on update right here and this will update oh, my no. my dashboard and everything so to go through and it does all this by itself it's very easy to do you just click on update it runs a script you see all these Linux commands coming in there where it's uh, updating files and downloading this and blah, 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 and just let it go. Just let it go. Sometimes it'll take a while. Sometimes it's pretty quick. It just kind of depends. Um, so while that's going... Yeah, it says reverting, update not successful. Does that? I wasn't even looking at it. <laughs> Sometimes it'll say that. Sometimes it'll say that, and it'll, and it'll retry itself. I think it's retrying right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... It, it's it's rare that I've had one of those fail. Usually it'll usually it'll go through even if it. Do, do we sacrifice a um, goat to the um, the demo of the gods? Because... I don't know. Not not a goat. I think I killed a, a cockroach in my house like a, a week or so ago. Eh, we'll see if it's fresh. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When it finishes like this, again, this is what I like to do. You don't necessarily have to do this. But if you see nothing's changed up at the top, I like to reboot. Because rebooting never hurt anything. Wow. That way you look get at a those buttons. fresh boot. Uh huh. And it's it's just uh it's easier. So we're gonna let that go for a minute. If ever if ever you have something that does not work in Pi Star, I suggest rebooting. Uh, and then try it again. So It's essentially just running app get update, app get distribution update. Yes, that's that's correct. Yeah, the same way that you would update a, a Debian or Ubuntu box. But it's doing it for us. So for right. the layman and right. Us Once again, okay. Folk. I I do a lot of videos on YouTube guys, and the common denominator that I've done is that when I do something that's a little bit too complex, I always have people coming by and ask me how, well, I've never done this before. How do you start from scratch? That's why the 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 title today is starting from scratch. So um yeah, there's probably a lot of people in the chat that know a lot more about Linux than I do. This is not a Linux how-to session on YouTube, okay? Um, it's not a Linux how-to channel. This is how to set up PyStar and get it to actually work 
for someone who may not know how to use Linux. So, but it is well the this Pi Star is all GUI based, yeah, web based, or uh, interface through the small little screen. You're not doing anything. You right. Don't even think about it. Running Linux behind the scenes. You're not. You're not going to need to know any of it. Right. Right. Yeah. If you're scared of Linux, if you're not sure what to do, don't wor don't worry about that. Use the graphical user interface or what's called a GUI on top of it, and uh, and that's all you really got to do. Okay. So now, after updating, we're on dashboard 2020 10:28, which is like two weeks old. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So it did work. And we're still on PyStar 3.4.17, which is okay. That's fine. Okay. So that's that's where we are. I'm gonna click on configuration. It's gonna still give me the modem issue. Okay. That's fine. And then it, and then it comes back and, and that and you see how it only took like two or three minutes to do that. So you can check for updates manually. There's probably a way to go in there and set it to automatically check. I just I've got so many hotspots that I don't run all of them all the time. So every time I boot one up and I didn't update this one today on purpose, I wanted to show it on the screen. So I just run an update, let it go, reboot it and be, boom, you're done. So you don't have to worry about it. So these are all your mo okay. Uh, I, I mentioned D star repeater and MMDVM host. It comes up as MMDV host by default. I would just leave it there unless you're trying to build a D star repeater, in which case I've never done that. Don't know how to use it. Maybe somebody in the chat. If somebody in the chat wants to come on and tell us how to build a D star repeater uh, sometime, maybe that's uh, can be another live stream episode upcoming. Uh, it also has a point here for simplex node and duplex repeater. Now you'll see simplex node is chosen by default. This radio button is lit up here on the left. Duplex repeater is not chosen. So the difference here is that this unit here is a simplex hotspot. And you can tell it's simplex because it's only got one antenna. Okay. Duplex hotspots, which I don't have mine right here. No, it's, it's behind the curtain. Duplex hotspots will have two antennas generally. The, the new R finder is duplex, but it's got internal antennas, so you can't even see them. DX Mini had a duplex hotspot, uh, one of the last hotspots they made. I really liked that hotspot, and I still use mine. That's the main one that I use duplex-wise. Um, so you can use it. So you can use du a duplex hotspot in, for two different reasons. Number one, it, if you're a DMR user, it'll allow you to use both time slot one and two at the same time, just like a duplex, just like a DMR repeater, a duplex repeater. Okay. Or if you're interfacing this Pi via USB, one of these USB device uh, ports here, directly to the back of a repeater, you're going to use duplex repeater as well. And I actually have one of these Pi's, not the TGIF spot, but a uh, an STM32 board connected to the back of my Bridgecom repeater inside, and it has duplex repeater selected because it's actually connecting to an actual repeater. It's not acting as a hotspot. It's acting as, it's connecting to an analog repeater and turning that repeater into a digital voice repeater that I can do DMR, D-star, whatever on. So, so simplex node is what generally people will, will click on. And th again, that's what it defaulted to. That's generally which if you're using D-star or Yezu System Fusion or NXDN, you're going to want that. If you don't have a hotspot with two antennas coming out of it, then you're probably going to want that also. Then you just use single time slot DMR and it's all good. Back over here. Okay, so the next uh, the next screen down is MMDVM host configuration. This is where you would configure DMR, DSTAR, YSF. Um, you can YSS for Yezu System Fusion. I got an email from a guy today that asked me how he could connect his hotspot to WireZX. And at the time of this recording, there is no way to connect a hotspot directly to WireZX. You can connect to YSF and FCS reflectors using the System Fusion protocol but you can't connect directly to WireZX without an actual WireZX HRI 200 box or a repeater or something like that. I'm not going to go too deep into that right now, but there's a lot of guys out there that are running their WireZX systems that have a cross connect to an FCS reflector so that people with hotspots can get into the WireZX system and people with WireZX systems can talk to the guys on the hotspot and vice versa. So you can do it, but there's a but you need more than just a hotspot to do it. Okay, so there's a roundabout way to do it that you can do on the back end. Same way that we take uh, Brandmeister Talk Group 31488 and connect it directly to the, the um, Texas Nexus um, Wires X room. Or actually, we're connecting it to the Texas Nexus FCS reflector, which then they connect to the, the Wires X room on the back end. So there's a way to do it, but, it's not, but you can't do it just with your hotspot by itself. 
So you've got P25 mode, you've got NXDN mode, YSF2 DMR, this will allow you to take a, a Yezu System Fusion Radio and use it to connect through the Pi Star into a DMR network. Uh, YSF to NXDN, same thing. You take your System Fusion Radio, connect it into an NXDN network. This is what's called what's commonly called transcoding. So it transcodes a YSF signal or a Yezu System Fusion signal into another protocol. Um, YSF to P25. DMR to YSF. So you can take your DMR radio, your little cheap Bofang or TYT MD380 type radio and can, and set your hotspot to translate from DMR to YSF and you can connect into a Yezu System Fusion YSF or FCS reflector. Uh, DMR to NXDN, same thing. Poxag is an old paging service. I don't know much about it. There's some videos about it on YouTube. You can go look that up. I don't, um, I've never actually used it myself. And then the MMDVM display type this right here is generally, if you're going to build your own hotspot, this is generally something you would set yourself. If you purchase a hotspot like this, it's going to be set for you. And uh, this depends on what screen you have attached to the hotspot. And if you have no screen attached to the hotspot, then that, that field doesn't matter. In fact, sometimes it might even be grayed out. I'm going to change that to Nexion because it was turned off. Uh, so, so that's just a, that's an MMD, DVM display that depends on the screen that's attached to your hotspot. It doesn't have anything to do with what network you're connecting to. Uh, 